Hi, in this video I'd like to take a look at the features and controls of DVS Machine's brand new plugin Multiband X6. As the name suggests, Multiband X6 is a multiband compressor featuring up to six independent bands of compression. But it does have some intelligent automatic adjustment of certain parameters which we will have a look at quickly in this video. Okay, starting with the top bar. On the left here, we've got the global power button. So this allows you to quickly and easily bypass the plugin as you're working. Next to that, we've got the undo function. Uh, alt click will actually redo. So this works as both an undo and then alt click as a redo function. Next to that, we've got the preset browser. So here you can save presets, browse the factory presets, and you've got access to your user preset folder as well, which I've got a default preset saved in mine. Uh, this just gives me one band of compression with no threshold, no compression at all. It's basically not doing anything. That's how I like to start. Next to that, we've got the AB function. So what this allows you to do is, let's say, for example, you're working on, on some settings. Uh, you have the plugin set up something like this. Uh, the AB function will allow you to compare between two sets of values quickly and easily without having to make adjustments each time. Lots of plugins have this, but it's, it's a useful addition to have. And next to that, we've got some further settings. So you can save presets here, copy settings to B, manage presets, initialize, zoom. Every plugin should have zoom. Uh, worth noting, you can also change the scale of the plugin using this handle in the bottom right hand corner as well, which again, every plugin should have these days. Uh, about licensing information, manual support. And then one further option is spectrum tilt. This actually changes the way that the graph view displays the spectrum analyzer. We will have a look at this in a second though. And speaking of the graph view, that's represented by this area on the user interface here. Now this is where we can add and remove bands. Now we do this by just hovering over the interface and where we have a tab up here, we can click on that and then a band is added. Let me add one over here as well, click here. So we've now got three separate bands on the compressor. I'm gonna set the low one to around about 100 hertz and the high one to about two and a half thousand. So we've now got three bands, one representing the lows, the mids and the highs. Now each band has its own power button so we can power the band on and off independently of each other. Each band has its own solo button. Worth noting that if you shift click, you can solo multiple bands, whichever ones you like. And then we have an edit button. So each band can be edited in place. So if I click the edit button here, what then happens is the controls at the bottom, the standard compressor controls, which you can see here, they only function on the band where we have the edit button enabled. But you can, again, you can shift click and do this on multiple bands. Uh, if these are not highlighted, these compressor controls become global. It's also worth noting that there are some controls for the spectrum analyzer as well. Now, if I play some audio through the compressor, we'll have a look at these controls. So the magnifying glass changes the resolution of the scale here. Now over on the right, we've got a control for the spectrum analyzer. It's worth noting that there's two displays that you can see on the spectrum analyzer. One is a blue outline, one is a shaded area. The blue outline is the output frequency response and the shaded area is the input signal. So you can actually see those independently. Now if I wanted to quickly change the input gain and output gain, you can see these two areas start to move away from each other. And as you do compression per band, you'll see the frequency response change from the input and the output signal. Coming down to the rest of the user interface, we've got input metering on the left, we've got output metering on the right, and in the central section, we've got the main compressor macro controls. In terms of metering options, you can access these using this cogwheel here. So the central meter, which is the wider band in the center, can be set to true or peak. This can actually be changed on the interface itself as well, either on input or output. Then we've also got the option to change the outer meter, which is the smaller narrow bar on the outside of the metering to off, they're not displayed at all, or we can set them to LUFS or RMS. We can also change the range of the meter between zero and 20 decibels. And then finally, the meter peaks can either be set to until they reset or every five seconds. It's also worth noting that the input and output gain can be controlled using these arrows. You can double click to reset or shift 
to control left and right channels independently. And that's true of both the input and output meters. I'll set those back to normal. And finally, we come on to the main controls. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting as adjustments you make in the main control section can be seen and also altered in the graph view as well. It's also worth noting that the compressor works in four different modes, punch, smooth, crunch, and expand. And I would suggest you have a look in the manual for a full explanation of how they differ from each other. And then we've got some fairly familiar compressor controls, attack, release, compression is effectively a combination of range and ratio. Then we've got compressor threshold and also gain. There are some advanced options behind this cogwheel, so let's have a look at those quickly. You can have the compressor running in normal, mid or side mode, and this can be linked or unlinked. There's also the ability to change the sidechain source from internal to external, and that can be set to multiband or wideband, and that signal can be soloed using this headphone icon. We will have a look at this in another video in depth. More advanced settings are the ability to set look ahead to either 0.2, 1, 10 or 20 milliseconds, which will obviously incur the relevant amount of latency and oversampling can be set to either 2x or 4x. You will notice that once those are switched on, even when I switch the advanced options off, there is an indicator letting you know which advanced options you have activated. So next we'll have a look at how the main controls interact with the readout on the graph view. So our attack, release, compression, threshold and gain controls in standard mode, everything's global. So if I make adjustments to the compression, for example, you can see that displayed in the graph view with this orange line, with the orange tabs. Similarly with the threshold, if I adjust the threshold, the threshold is displayed on the graph view with these blue bars. And the gain is represented by these blue tabs and this blue bar at the top here. Attack and release settings are displayed in the middle bar here in milliseconds. So if I make adjustments to the attack and release, you can see those being adjusted in milliseconds in this middle bar. Now it's worth noting that these are all global controls, but if you solo any particular band, these then turn into macro controls for that particular band. So any adjustments I make to compression, threshold, gain, attack or release will only apply to this one band that I have soloed. And in the same way, if I edit a particular band, in this case, I'm gonna edit the high end band, the top end band, the same thing happens. Compression, threshold, gain, release and attack. Rule set for only that band. It's also worth noting that in global mode, you can shift, adjust a control. I'll do that with the compression and you do get a frequency tilt. So you can see the low end and the high end being oppositely adjusted here. And this could be useful if you have lots of bands active and you just want to make an adjustment to the overall frequency spectrum. Okay, last thing to have a look at is some of the unique and advanced automated functionality of Multiband X6. So I've set myself a default preset here. Let's add a couple of bands to work with, giving ourselves three bands in total. Uh, roughly the same place as they were before. And what I want to do is just apply some compression. I'm going to run some audio through the plugin and just apply some compression. Probably try to over compress each band slightly so we can use some of the automated parameters. So first thing I want to do is use automated threshold detection. So we'll do this now. Success. So when we click this button, it listens to the incoming audio signal and we've got threshold level set per band here, as you can see represented by these blue bars again. And again, the, imp the, the input level is represented by this blue metering on each band. So that automatically sets the threshold per band, which leaves us free to just focus on the compression itself. So let's solo the low end. I'm not gonna go too crazy, but I wanna do something so that we can hear it in the final mix. Mid range. Make that quite punchy and probably overemphasize the high end as well. So that's our result. Let's A B that with the uh, uncompressed mix. So you can hear we've automatically lowered the volume quite a lot here. So let's use some of the, the gain compensation. So we can do that manually, either globally or per band but there are two automatic gain compensation modes. There's wideband gain compensation. 
which attempts to keep the overall volume constant. And there's multiband gain compensation that attempts to keep the volume and frequency balance constant. So let's listen to these two in isolation. AB that with the uncompressed mix. Yeah. Let's try the multiband. Much more top end heavy. In this case, I think I prefer wide band. And what this does, it really allows you to focus on what the compression is doing rather than any change in level. Obviously, if something's louder, you're going to perceive it as sounding better. But one last thing we can do is using this magic one button down here. If the gain compensation hasn't really got the level absolutely right, we can try and get that absolutely right with the level matcher here. So we do have an automated level matcher. So once again, I click on this and it will listen to the mix and try and match levels as close as possible. So let's do that now. There you go. It's given us another adjustment of minus 1.4 dB. So this compressed mix should now be as level as we can get it automatically with the uncompressed mix. So let's have a listen to that. And that's pretty close as far as I can tell. Right, let's switch this audio off for a second. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the overview of Devious Machines Multiband X6. We have just gone over the controls briefly, showing you what everything does as best as we possibly can. But in future videos, we will go more in depth in some of, in some of the advanced features so that we really can get under the hood of this brand new plugin.